Hey there, how's it going? I recently took part in the Vertical Jam put on by 8-Bits to Infinity. The focus of the jam is to make a game that's at least 50% taller than it is wide, as well as involving vertical scrolling. And to go along with that restriction, there's also an optional theme of binary. I've always been a fan of the way 8-Bits to Infinity structures their jams, which I guess should be apparent since I partner with them for our annual game jam, the Vim Jam. Sometimes, when taking part in a game jam, you get an idea right away, and this time, I actually had one. A few weeks ago, I was messing around with this tower defense lane shooter prototype one night, and I had the thought of taking this and reworking it into an idea that had just two lanes for the binary theme. However, having two lanes alone seemed a bit too easy, so I started playing with the turrets and moving them back and forth on a sine wave. And this ended up letting me remove the lanes entirely and make kind of a more open tower defense style game. Also, I just kind of thought it looked cool, so that was enough for me to at least keep rolling with it for a bit. Now, it looks really cool, but having both turrets moving at the same time over the entirety of the playfield didn't really make it very binary. But what if only one moved at a time? allowing the player to stop one side while the other side moves, making it able to focus fire on stronger enemies, thus giving them a binary decision. So check for the theme. And because we're in a vertical format, I wanted to make a game that was more mobile focused, so we're going to go with only using touch controls. I ended up changing it later, but my thoughts at this time were to have an operator that you would pick up and move back and forth to control which turret was active. Eventually, I just changed it so you just tapped one side or the other and it became active. Just to see if it was functional, I added some basic enemies that spawned randomly at the top of the screen and moved themselves down to the bottom. The player needs to balance activating the turrets to defeat them all before they hit the turret platform. I was surprised that even at this state with consistent spawns, the game was actually pretty engaging. I was having a good time already without any difficulty scaling, so I figured it was a fun idea and I should move forward with it. The game is supposed to be scrolling, so I took inspiration from a game like 19xx, which was listed as an example and just makes the scrolling visual. Obviously the gameplay area is stable and the background is just scrolling to help give theme an effect. And having all the enemies be the same would get a bit boring, so I added some larger higher health enemies to really see how the balance would work out. Here you can see that we need to leave one turret in a stationary position in order to do enough damage to defeat it before it gets to the bottom. With the basic concept and mechanics in, now it's time to figure out the game flow. With what we have now, there's definitely lots of ways to do this. I could take the traditional route of having levels that you need to complete, defeat all the enemies and move on, or make it an arcade style high score type game. But recently I've picked up and started playing Vampire Survivors for the first time, and I've been absolutely hooked. I know I'm late to the party on this one, but I'm here now and I love these mechanics. Since we are working on a game jam, I try not to make the play experience too long. So I thought that surviving for 5 minutes would be a good goal for the game, gaining experience to get stronger and survive the waves that come in over time. On stream, I brainstormed with Twitch chat about what power-ups we should use. And to keep everything reasonable and not overscope myself, we went with elements that enhance the main weapon over time, instead of adding new weapons or even more. Also, to stick with the binary theme, I don't want to start adding more turrets or anything like that, because I feel it wouldn't fit as well and it would take away from the theme a bit. So we ended up with things like making the bullets deal more damage, shooting faster, increasing the turret movement speed, things like that. When an enemy is defeated, they drop some XP which is collected. And when enough is collected and a new level is reached, the action stops and the player will be able to select their upgrade. To make sure I could get it all functioning, I added in a debug menu that allows me to increment the upgrades up and down just to see how they feel which ended up working out great because later I was able to just tie into these function calls when setting up the upgrade screen. I also added one final enemy, so now we have a basic one, a mini boss, and a boss. Basic enemies spawn every two seconds, mini bosses spawn every 30, and the bosses spawn every 60. This will increase when we start putting in the difficulty waves later, but it seems like a good balance for the time. I did feel that having the two weapons might just be a little limiting, so I also added an area of effect attack that would come out every 15 seconds or so that represented something being dropped on the floor and hitting all the enemies as it passes by. On stream, we were discussing different ways to theme the game because I didn't really want it to just be your typical war zone shooty shooty type game. Rummy Plays Games made the suggestion that it could be dust sprites and we were shooting bubbles to clean them. And I loved this idea. Thanks for the suggestion, Rummy. A couple days later, I started on the art and while I normally do pixel art, I wanted to try something a little different this time. Basically, I tried out this crazy concept and hear me out, I used more pixels. A lot more. I started by making tiles, thinking we could be sliding along a kitchen floor being chased by dust sprites. And for those, I took direct inspiration from Studio Ghibli films and made little soot sprites as basic enemies. The mini bosses became dust bunnies, and the big bosses became pigs. No real reason other than pigs are typically referred to as dirty, as in your room's a pigsty. 
I understand pigs aren't actually super dirty. They roll in mud to keep themselves cool because they don't sweat. But this is cute. Shut up. For the area that the player will control, I made a vacuum crossed with a Swiffer, I guess? So it has two turrets coming out of the front and lights on it to indicate which one is active at any given time. Does it make a whole lot of sense? Not really. Does it matter? Also not really. So to keep myself from noodling it to death, to steal a line from one of my favorite games growing up, And I wish that was it, but there was a lot of UI work to still do. All of the upgrades need icons to make them easier to recognize. If you just use text, it's a little too hard to parse out which one each is. And of course, we need a logo and menus and all the other fun stuff that looks great in a speed up montage, but takes hours in real time. And don't even get me started on putting in all the sound effects and music. Great in the devlog, but long when implementing. But I was able to get everything in and I started working on the wave spawning. This is where, unbeknownst to me, I made a huge mistake. The engine I use has an event called every X seconds, where you can say while it's running, every number of seconds that I specify, something happens. I was using this for the enemy spawn and to ramp it up. So every two seconds, a basic enemy would spawn. If the minute counter is one, an extra enemy spawns. If it's two, two enemies spawn, etc. Everything was working great when I was testing, so I got the game all finished up and posted up on itch. I even continued to test the game more while it was posted. It was late at this point, and the jam ended early the next morning. I'm not much of a morning person, so I decided to stay up late, finish it up, and then sleep in instead. So I posted the game and did a bunch more testing of the browser playable version, because I know there can be issues sometimes when the game is exported. And through all the plays, everything seemed pretty good. I was able to beat the game a few times, so I went to bed pretty late, and I slept in a little the next day. However, I woke up the next day to a comment saying that the game was really difficult and the second wave came in before they could even get enough upgrades. Which I thought was weird, but sometimes you can get comments on your games that it's too hard, no matter what you do, so I didn't think too much of it at first. Until a bit later when I went to show the game on stream, and I got overrun almost immediately. The mini boss that was supposed to spawn at 30 seconds showed up early. So did the big boss. Yeah, this is way too many. So then I tried again and they spawned immediately when the level started. Okay, so something got broke. Something got broke real hard. So now I'm confused. This wasn't happening the night before with the same build. It took us a lot of digging, but it turns out for some reason the every X seconds timer is starting with the loading of the game. So if you sit on the main menu for five minutes and press play, the full game's worth of spawns happens immediately. I honestly don't know why it's doing this. That code shouldn't be running while it's on the menu because it doesn't even link up to that event sheet. However, apparently it is. So I ended up needing to put a disclaimer on the game page to press play right away to get a more accurate experience. Because it's typical for a lot of jams, uploading is blocked until the end of the voting period for the jam. However, with the help of Twitch chat, we were able to get the spawning tied into the actual timer, which is definitely the way I should have been doing it in the first place, but hindsight is 2020, of course. It's a game jam and you usually just try to make the game work, and if it is working, you move on. And I guess what ended up happening is with all the testing I was doing, I was immediately starting the game and hitting play right away, so I never noticed that things were happening slightly out of time. That night, I even tested the game on my phone and I didn't see it, so I just missed it. By the way, if you load the game on your phone, it works great there. If you're watching this video, the voting period is over, so I have updated the game. If you would like to check it out, it should all be working correctly now. There's a link in the description if you want to check it out. But it goes to show that even sometimes when you test, you may not be testing all of the scenarios you need. And as we all know, like life, bugs find a way. Even with all the issues, I still think the game is actually pretty fun, especially when the spawns are working correctly. Well, I think the concept is cool and it has a really unique look to it. I don't think this would be a game that would work as a full release or anything, but as a silly concept, I think it looks cool and is pretty fun for the five minute experience that it is. Once again, if you want to check it out, there are links in the description, as well as links to check out all the other games made for the jam as well. Also, please check out 8-Bits to Infinity. They run game jams every other month and are always a blast to take part in. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Or you can join us at twitch.tv slash vimlark to talk in real time and see the game making process live. Also, please hit the like and subscribe button to see more. And let the YouTube algorithm know that I still exist. I'd like to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters, especially my video producer dear and above patrons like See the Mess, Matsi, Nazar Salim, Pixelator Gadzi, and Warren Steven Rose. You're all awesome, and I can't thank you enough for the continued support. I'd also like to give a big thank you to you for watching, especially if you've made it this far. Stay safe, healthy, and be good to one another. And I'll talk with you next time. Have a good one.
Later.